Okay, hi everyone. Welcome back to DARE Online. Um, we are doing lesson 10 today. This is the last lesson that we're going to do because unfortunately our actual last lesson, our last time together is normally when we read DARE essays um, and sadly we don't have the ability to do that because uh, I would have to have you guys here to film that and you aren't here because you can't come here because you're staying at home like the governor told you to. Um, okay, so we're just going to go ahead and move on to lesson 10. Uh, the last lesson we did, I don't know if you actually waited a whole week between lesson 9 and lesson 10. I've got no control over when you play these videos, so maybe it was last week, maybe it was 30 seconds ago. I have no idea. So, um, lesson 9 review. Last week we talked, uh, not last week, last lesson, last time I talked. Maybe it was 10 seconds ago, I don't know. Uh, last time I talked, we talked about being a good citizen. Have you been a good citizen lately? Um, maybe uh, in between lessons nine and 10, you uh, did your homework. Maybe you participated in a Zoom meeting with your teachers and asked your teachers how they're doing, right? Are you doing okay? Are you having fun? Are you keeping yourself entertained at home? Um, maybe you took a break in between lessons nine and 10 to make your bed. Maybe you helped your little brother or your little sister with some of their schoolwork. Um, hopefully, you found a way to be a good citizen in the last few minutes or the last week or so. Um, what does it mean to be anonymous? Any takers? It means no one will know who made the report. Nobody knows. Your name wasn't involved. A lot of times at the police department, somebody will call our dispatchers and say that there's a problem, maybe in their neighborhood. Maybe a, a neighbor is playing music too loudly, but they don't want their neighbor to get mad at them. They don't really want to be involved with it. They just want to let the police know what's going on. So they'll ask to remain anonymous. And that way, when we go to deal with whatever problem they're talking about, that we don't say who made the report, so nobody knows. We just say it was an anonymous report. That way nobody has to be involved. Um, <clears throat> we were talking a lot about helping people uh, in our lesson on good citizenship, and we talked about the benefits of helping people. The person gets the help that they need. We can feel good about helping other people. And what we really like about helping other people is if we're helping somebody with their problems, it means we aren't the ones with a problem of our own, right? And that's good because uh, we don't like having problems. But sometimes we do have problems, right? We're bound to have a problem sometimes. And when we do have a problem, we cross our fingers and we hope that there's good citizens around us to help us out during our times of need, right? And we go to people in our help network. So our help network is a person or group of people you can go to for advice, help, encouragement, or guidance. Um, on page 30 in your workbook, you see a little chart there. If you don't have your workbook with you and you wanna go get it, um, you can pause your video right now to do that. Or if, like I said, you left your video or your book at home, um, feel free to do this on a scrap piece of paper, or maybe you can just do it in your head, whatever you wanna do. So you'll see this chart here. There's a circle in the middle, and there are six circles that go around that middle one. I want you to put your own name or write me or draw a little happy face of yourself in the middle circle. So I think that I'm gonna go with a smiley face. That's me, right? That's Officer Bloomfield. Doesn't it look like me? Um, and then around that, we are going to write who is in our help network. Now, the reason we're in the middle of our help network is, first of all, it's our help network, right? So, here's me, Jill. And then around my name, I'm gonna put people who are in my help network. Not only is it my help network, but I'm in the center of it because I'm resourceful. There's a lot of things that I can do to help myself when I'm having a problem. Um, if I'm not very good at math, Maybe I can make flashcards to help me be better at math. Um, if I'm not very good at a song that I'm trying to learn on the piano, I can practice more at that song on the piano. Um, if maybe I'm a pitcher in softball and maybe I feel like my pitching skills aren't as good as they should be, maybe I ask my mom or my dad to go out in the backyard and let me practice, right? Or maybe I get one of those like um, pitching nets, you know, that have like the smaller hole 
and practice my pitching in there, right? There's a lot of things that we can do to help ourselves, but sometimes we have to outsource the job, right? Sometimes we have to find somebody else who's gonna help us, and we have to know who we're gonna go to for help. So I want you guys, in those six bubbles that surround the middle one, it looks something like this in your book. Of course, in your book, it's different colors. And in those six circles, I want you guys to write the names of people that you know you can go to for help when you need it, right? So think about family members that you might go to. Think about friends or maybe your friend's parents. Maybe your coaches, maybe your teachers, maybe a youth group leader that you know and trust. Maybe neighbors, maybe there's like a go-to neighbor that your family is pretty good friends with that you could go knock on their door if you needed something. Think about those people. I want you to make sure that you have at least three grown-ups in this help network because even though your friends are really great and maybe they could help you when you're feeling lonely, maybe they could help you with your math homework if they're a little bit better at math than you. Um, maybe your friend could help you play catch, right? Or maybe they could help you practice a skill or something or just cheer you up. Um, sometimes you need a grown-up to help you. So make sure that you have at least three grown-ups. I'm gonna fill out my help network the way it would be for me, okay? So I would write my mom. She's, um, she's probably who I go to for help maybe the most. My mom lives really close to me, right? Plus, she loves me, right? And so um, she's, a, she's a yes kind of girl, right? So if I asked her for help for, with something, she would probably do it. Um, my dad is also in my help network. My dad's a really smart guy. He's very level-headed. I could ask my dad for advice, and I know that he would give me the best advice of anybody that I know. Um, my, let me see, my best friend, Sarah, Ooh. oh my gosh, I'm just making messes here, sorry. Um, my best friend, Sarah, I would go to her for um, help or advice or anything like that. She is a really great listener. Maybe sometimes when we need help, we just need to vent. Maybe we're really mad about something or sad about something and we just need to talk about our feelings. Our best friends are really good for that. My best friend is especially good at that. My sister. I know what you're thinking. I don't like my sister. I fight with my sister. She's mean to me. She's a brat. Um, but guess what? I used to think that sometimes about my sister too. I know we fight with our brothers and sisters a lot, but our siblings love us. And when we grow up, they kind of become our best friends and that's pretty cool. My sister, we didn't always get along growing up, right? We fought just like maybe you guys do with your brothers and sisters, but my sister is very helpful. She is great at math, right? She's the best at math. In fact, she's a math teacher. That's how good she is at math. Um, my sister's also really funny. And she also is a really great babysitter. So she has babysat for me a bunch of times before. I've even borrowed money from my sister. Yep, sisters are good for that kind of stuff. I would say that Kathy, my neighbor, she is a really good helper for me. If I was gonna be late coming home from work and I needed someone to let my dogs out, Kathy would do that for me. Or if I was baking a cake and I went to the refrigerator and I found out, oh my goodness, I don't have any eggs. Or everybody bought all of the eggs from Schnooks because of you know the quarantine and everybody's hoarding groceries. And maybe I need an egg. I could go to Kathy's house and borrow an egg from her. So that would be really helpful. Um, and let's see, I know my friend Holly, right? I have two best friends, lucky me. Uh, my best friend Holly, I work with her, right? And so if I needed um, advice or if I needed to talk to, something, to her about something that was going on at work or I needed help with a work problem, I could probably go to Holly and ask her opinion or ask for her advice on something that was work related. Right? So that would, be, um, that would be helpful for me. If I was having a problem at school, right? when I come to your school and I teach you, all of your principals are really, really great helpers, and I know that I could go to them. So I wonder what your help network looks like. It probably looks a little something like mine, maybe some best friends, 
Maybe some of your best friend's parents, maybe some neighbors, maybe your teacher would be on yours, maybe your principal is on yours, and um, I'm sure you guys found a way to fill that up. If you're struggling to find somebody to fill a bubble, you could always put your DARE officer in there, right? Um, I would help you with anything. Police officers in general are very helpful, so if you needed something, um, you could always ask me for help. I would be happy to help you with any problems you're having. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to think about a specific time that we needed help from somebody. So think about a time you needed help, and we're going to fill out page 29 on that incident. Think about a time you needed help from someone. Okay? Maybe you needed help with homework. Maybe you were sick. Maybe you got hurt. Maybe you wanted to learn a new skill, like an instrument, perhaps. Um, maybe you missed the bus and needed to get to school. Maybe you had a fight with your bestie and you needed advice on how to deal with that. Maybe you made a mess and you didn't know how to clean it up. Um, so on page 29, we are going to look at what was happening in that situation. So write a description, um, maybe one of these things you could write on there. What type of help did you need? So um, if it was being sick, you probably needed medical help, right? Or getting hurt, you probably needed medical help. Or get a ride to the hospital if it was like, you know, like a serious injury. Um, maybe you needed like academic help if it was homework. Maybe you needed um, your mom's homemaking skills to figure out how to get Gatorade out of white carpet. Anybody been there? I have. Um, if you want to know what my example was, um, I wrote mine on the board over here. So the example that I wrote on um, a time that I needed help was right now. My DARE lessons got cut short because of the coronavirus, right? They canceled school, we can't go to school, I can't go, you can't go, and we only did eight out of 10 lessons. And that's not fair. You were promised 10, 10 lessons, right? And you got eight lessons. I was promised 10 meetings with you guys and I got shorted two meetings. And that bums me out because we have important stuff to talk about. So um, what kind of help did I need? Well, I needed technology help. I needed a way to bring DARE to your houses so that you could hear what I had to say. And maybe I'll get some like emails or comments from you guys on what I had to say. Um, so number three, how did you get assistance? Well, I asked Brett. Uh, you guys don't know this because Brett's on the other side of the camera right now. I can see him, but you can't see him, right? But he's really good at his job. I don't know how to work a video camera. Um, I certainly don't know how to like put it onto a computer and edit it. He gave me this microphone to wear. I don't, I don't know if that does anything for you. He told me not to hit it, but I don't know. I don't know if that's, we had to do this drill before we got started. Um, there's things he knows that I don't know about making videos. I have no idea. Um, when I got here, I told him, I'm like, I'm all nervous. My pits are sweating. Uh, I'm just like looking at, you can't see it right now, but there's like 65 empty chairs in here. It's very awkward. Uh, there's also two cameras. Maybe you don't know that, but there is two cameras. And uh, we had to do these like, I had to count to 10. I had to clap in front of my face. Uh, I kind of had to tell him what I was going to do, but I didn't really know what I was going to do because I've never done it like this before. And he's like, it's fine. It's going to be fine. I'm going to edit it and uh, it'll be great. So hopefully it's great. I have no idea. Um, I know it's going to be though because uh, he's videoed things before me uh, in, in other situations and he does a great job, right? I couldn't do this without his help though, right? So I asked Brett for help. He works for the city of O'Fallon too, by the way. I didn't, he's just not from the street. I, I knew him before this. Um, what are some positive characteristics of people who might help? Well, if you're thinking of like, well, what does that mean, Officer Bloomfield? I don't know um, examples of positive characteristics, right? Here's an example list of positive characteristics that you might think about for this, um, for this exercise. Um, all these different positive characteristics. For mine, I wrote patient, reliable, intelligent, and brave, right? 
Because if Brett wasn't brave, then he wouldn't come out in the middle of the stay at home order to do this for me, right? Um, but here he is in the building at work uh, doing his job, right? Uh, if he wasn't patient, then this certainly wouldn't get done because like I told you, I was very nervous to come here today and do this uh, to a video camera instead of to all of you guys because it's different than what I'm used to, right? So he's very patient and sometimes we have to redo parts and he has to tell me to raise my voice or smile more or whatever, right? Um, intelligent, right? Because he's got the know-how. He's got the skills with the camera and the editing and the computering and the audio-ing. I don't know what he does, you guys, but he's smarter than me when it comes to making movies. So here's, here we are, right? Those are some things that I was looking for because uh, why is that important? Because it wouldn't get done. It just wouldn't get done if he didn't have those skills, right? It would be much less enjoyable for me if he wasn't patient. It'd be much less enjoyable for you if he wasn't intelligent. Um, it wouldn't get done at all if he wasn't reliable because we both showed up here this morning at 11 o'clock. That's not true. I bet Brett was probably here before me. I know he was. I don't know what, he's got a lot of bags. You can't see him, but there's a lot of bags here with equipment in it. Um, and brave, right? He had to leave his house and come out during the, during the big pandemic, right, to get this done, which I appreciate. So maybe um, something on this list um, is what you guys needed for your example of a time that you needed help. But think about those things, right? Honest, generous, patient, Compassionate, kind, reliable, understanding, supportive, optimistic, right? People who see the bright side of things. Brave, imaginative, intelligent, respectful, focused, considerate, insightful, motivated, trustworthy, open-minded, reasonable, dedicated, right? So maybe you're thinking about the people that you put in your help network and you're thinking of what kinds of those positive character traits that you could apply to those people. And they probably all have different positive character traits that you associate with them. And that's why you go to different people for different reasons, right? Because maybe um, you need somebody who's really patient for one thing, or maybe somebody who's really creative or imaginative for another, or maybe somebody who's really open-minded to give advice. Um, so those are all good traits to think of. Are you those characteristics, right? Um, whose help network are you a part of? If your mom and dad did this, would they put you in a bubble? Would your best friends put you in a bubble, right? Are you helpful? Are you a good person to ask for help? Do you have those positive character traits? Think of those traits in terms of yourself, right? If we go back to that screen, um, some of these things I am, and some of these things probably, probably I'd go to for somebody else um, for these things. Uh, I think that I'm honest, I'm optimistic for sure. Um, I like to think that I'm kind. What do you think? I don't know. Maybe? Any feedback? I don't know. Email me. Um, so some of these things I think that I am. So I want you guys to think about what kind of positive character traits that you possess. Um, do you like it when people help you? I do. I think it uh, makes me feel really happy. It makes me feel really secure that I know that I have people that I can go to for help. And what do you think of people? who help you, right? Do you think um, your friends, like is it just expected? Do you take it for granted when people help you that you know? What about strangers? What if you um, had your hands full and a stranger opened the door for you? Or maybe they held the elevator for you? Or maybe, um, I don't know, what kind of helpful things do strangers do? Maybe you can think of an example. Um, on page 26, you have your glossary. The only thing you need to add this week is help network. And this is the time that I would normally say, any more questions about the D.A.R.E. essay? I'm really looking forward to hearing them next week. But I'm not going to hear them next week because you guys are out of school for the rest of the summer. So um, if you did prepare a D.A.R.E. essay, I would love love to hear it or to read it, right? So I put my email address on the screen for you. If you are a Google user, and I think most of you are Google users, right? If you'd made a Google Doc, then you can share it with me at my email address, jill.bloomfield at gmail.com. Um, I would love, 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 love to read your D.A.R.E. essays if you wrote one. Um, if you didn't, I know that we didn't get all the way through our D.A.R.E. lessons, and so maybe you didn't prepare one. That's okay. 
It's okay. But if you did write a DARE essay, please, please, please share it with me. I would love to read it. And if you want to, maybe you're really good. Maybe you've got a camera man at your house. I have no idea. Maybe you're really good with a selfie. Um, and you want to record it, you can also send it to me. And I would love to hear it or read it, whatever you guys want to do. Um, and that is my email address. And that's all I have for you. We got through our books. And um, I really miss you guys. And thanks for watching my video. And I hope you guys are doing so good with your homework. And if you're struggling with your homework or if it's really difficult or you feel really overwhelmed, it's OK. Just stick with it. I'm sure you guys are doing a really great job. I would be overwhelmed too. Um, if you're frustrated, you're not the only ones. Um, it's OK. And this is a really tough thing that you guys are going through right now. And it's not what any of us thought was going to happen at the end of our fifth grade year. But um, you guys, I'm sure, are doing a fine job of trying to keep up with all your homework. And be nice to your parents. And be nice to your brothers and sisters. And go to those Zoom meetings. And be pleasant for your teachers. And make good choices. Be safe. Be responsible. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.